So, this is um, something I've been wanting to do for a while, but never really got around to it, so I'm getting around to it now. And the reason why it, the, um, it's not Taz Wanted and it won't be Super Mario Galaxy 200% Let's Play tomorrow is because um, I use a Wii to HDMI converter that plugs straight into the Wii because my TV doesn't have AV. And it, um, I gave that to my sister for her birthday because I gave, also gave her a Wii and I know if her TV had a HDMI uh, well, AV in and I didn't order another one, um, so I just thought, okay, I'll just take this with me, and if she, get, and if she doesn't have um, AV in, I'll give her mine, and I'll order a new one. She didn't, so I gave her mine, and I have ordered a new one, and it is on its way. It will take a little while, but until then, I'll um, just fill it in with whatever I feel like recording on that day. Anyway, so, is this going to be a style of, like, a little mini-series? Um going through the main controllers for each console of a manufacturer. Now I don't have every console, and I, well I definitely don't have every console, and I don't have every controller for every console, so if I'm missing a controller for console and I want to talk about it, I'll just show an image, image of it and talk about it over looking at the image. Um, another thing, um, these are only going to be the main controllers that were made by the company um, and they are sold with the console um, mostly um, unless I feel like it is worth talking about in the video then I'll mention it but if you know if it's not the at least one of the main controllers for the console that was pushed by the company there and packaged in with the console then I uh, will talk about it in its own video. So today we will be starting with the history of Nintendo controllers. Um, so here I have an NES controller, well, it's an NES classic controller but because I don't have an NES because they are a bit hard to get your hands on, but this is an NES classic controller. Pretty much the same apart from it's got a different end. Um, so let's have a look at this. You are it, it. This design is basic. It uh, and that's where it is. Well, that's where it meant. It was meant to be. It was supposed to be easy to grasp um, for you to get into because you have two buttons, a directional pad, start and select. Pretty uh, basic, and uh, you know if you just hand this to anybody, that you know they'll be able to use it. And they basically kept that uh, mentality of keeping uh, controllers accessible to everybody into their next console, the uh, SNES, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, they added, uh, over here, two more buttons, and they made them all um, different coloured, and uh, they added shoulder buttons. A little bit more complicated than the NES uh, controller, but still, you know, easy to grasp. You have four buttons, start, select, directional pad, and they're just shoulder buttons. So you basically only have an extra four buttons to remember. Um, and uh, yeah, that's probably the best next step up they could have done. After that came out the Nintendo 64. Um, and throughout all of the many, like, um, controversies it had like with cat keeping the cartridges and everything. I think the main problem that everybody had with it was the controller. Yeah. So where uh, um, they previously had the mentality of keeping it basic and simple to understand and just easy to pick up, that basically went out the window with the N64. There, this was more supposed to be open for different styles of gameplay. So, uh, how you was meant to use it is the C buttons here were meant to be uh, to move uh, the camera. Uh, you know, C camera camera buttons. Um, you have A and B again. So you, you have A and B, and you have start, and you have a uh, um, Z button and the uh, shoulder buttons. And uh, you not only do you have a D-pad, but you also have a thumbstick, uh, which is uh, one 
which is this is actually the first controller to f made by a big company to feature a thumbstick. Now, the uh, main uh, um, way you you were supposed to play this is this, uh, for games that required you uh, to use D pad, you'd have your D thing, finger there, and just like um, you know, you ha hold it like this. Uh, you know, so you have access to them and them, and uh, you know. Uh, but I would usually hold it like this. Now, this did not give you access to the L button, but you did have. But again, you could always just replace the L buttons function with the Z buttons function if you were developing a game or if you added optional controls. The um, player could do that, uh, and then you basically have access to everything. Uh, again, that's part from the and all that, but yeah. So, it uh, also featured a port on the bottom. This could be used for many things. Um, it could be used to put in a um, pack to connect to uh, Game Boy games, which would uh, allow you to trade Pokemon in uh, in Pokemon Stadium and play even play Pokemon in Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. And it, uh, um, you were, could use the Doduo and Dodrio yeah, Game Boy in uh, uh, in um, Stadium 1 and 2 to speed up the gameplay. Um, now, next is the best controller of all time, in my opinion. Like, this is accounting all of the Xbox controllers, all of Nintendo's controllers, all of Sony's controllers. In my opinion, this is the best controller that, that there has ever been. Like, they could have added a Z, L and Z, R button, like, but that's really my only problem with it, apart from the D-pad is, is a little bit, you know, not the best, but it's still usable, unlike the Xbox 360 D-pad, which was pretty much unusable. Anyway, so, uh, this is smaller, but in a way more complicated than the uh, N64 controller. So, you have this one stick here to move around. You know, that's basic. Uh, they replace the C buttons with a C stick to move the camera around more fluidly. Um, you have a D-pad, you have a start button, no select button, and we have B, A, Y and X, which I will get more into uh, then. Um, you have a Z button, again I could have done with a Z R button, but anyway. And then you have two triggers, uh, L and R. Now, let's get into the buttons a bit more, deeper here. Right, so, they, uh, when Nintendo was making this controller, they uh, um, were thinking how the game would work. Um, and the, the main thing is, A is supposed to be the button you use the most, so for Mario Sunshine, A is to jump, because that's what you're going to be doing the most, moving and jumping, and then, you know, pressing down to squirt and hover. Uh, B is uh, the button that you don't use as much, but it still gets used, you know, and then X and Y is just the occasional buttons you use. Now. This is really, really well implemented in Smash Bros. Like, um, Smash Bros on the, you know, every competitive Smash player always plays with the uh, GameCube controller. And, uh, yeah, that, that is why it's because the Smash Bros just perfectly laid out the controls to the GameCube controller. And uh, because Nintendo knew how to use their own controller. And that is really why, at least in my opinion, the GameCube controller is the best controller of all time. Moving on. So, everybody basically got sick of Nintendo's overly complicated controllers. So, Nintendo was like, no, you you know what? You don't want overcomplicated controllers. Here, here's two sticks that you flail around. Have fun. And everybody loved it. But yeah, this is basically the Wii Remote. You flail it around and you do stuff in the game. It uh, was uh, so the Wii and the Wii Remote were the first to co was the first console to popularise motion controls. Now they had existed prior, 
but they were about as uh, um, responsive as um, an old person pressing the buttons for you. But yeah, um, buttons, B button, D pad for navigating uh, menus, A button, plus and minus and home button, plus and minus usually used for pausing the game or opening a, opening a map. One and two, which I hardly ever used. I don't even think they were even used in Galaxy, really. Um, thumbstick. Pretty much a staple of video games at this point. C and Z. That's all your buttons. Like, you really don't have the... Yeah, they pretty much just went overly basic with the Wii Remote. Um... And can you really blame them with, with you know, how much people are complaining about um, the N64 being too complicated? And the, the, the your GameCube controller basically being, you know, suited to a certain type of gameplay, but not every game using that, so, you know, taking that in, so a lot of games didn't have that good controls on the GameCube. Anyway, next we, well... Well, after the Wii came the Wii U, and the Wii U had its, like, Wii U gamepad, but it's between that and this next one, there's really not much, many changes, and I don't have a Wii U, um, so I'm just going to have to, it's, it's literally just the same layout of buttons, pretty much. Um... Apart from like the uh, yeah, so switch controller, Joy Cons. Oh, the only real difference between these and the Wii U gamepad is that these are detachable, and um, that one's not a D pad. So, again, very basic. You have um, a button on the back to uh, unlock the Joy Con, um, and as you can see, I've actually had mine slightly customized if I. You can see that silver bit around there that I've actually had the lock replaced with metal, which I suggest you do if you get these controllers because um, the plastic does wear down and it does mean that the Joy-Cons can actually slip out of the Nintendo Switch. But anyway, um, you have plus and minus. You have two thumbsticks, one for camera, one for moving, usually. You have a take picture button and a home button. You have A, X, B and Y. You have four directional buttons. Again, oh yeah, and ZR, ZL, uh, and R, L and R as well. Four buttons on there. Pretty basic, you know, again, keeping to the simple style. Um, and they're meant to lock onto the switch in portable mode, and it, uh, um, can uh, you know so look uh, because of that, and you know they lock on, uh, and if you do that with the plastic ones, you've worn them out a bit, they'll just fall off. Um, and uh, they they can be used separate to the console. Um, and that's pretty much every major Nintendo controller. The only real controllers of Nintendo's I haven't talked about it again is like third parties so like um, Nintendo Power Glove. There was a mo that um, one on the NES so you could wave your hands above. Um, and there was also the Pro Controller, um, which will which are either going to basically going to be cut either have the same right with the switch pro controller it basically has the same layout as an xbox controller so and um, that's going to basically be covered in uh, when i cover the xbox controllers um and i'll probably give the um like power glove and uh, um other like uh you know, third-party controllers, their own little uh, 
video to explain them and how they work and uh, everything. So, I hope you enjoyed this look at the history of Nintendo controllers. I'll see you guys uh, in the next video. Bye-bye.